Hi, let's try to understand one of the complicated topic in STA, which people actually find it a little bit hard to understand, which is basically how the delays are calculated and 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 how basically delay what is a delay function of what do you look in the liberty file to understand how the actual sta tool is going to calculate the delay so cell delays inside a cell are calculated from non linear uh, delay model that's a type of the model and this uh, model you are basically library is characterized uh, by foundry or people who are characterizing the library and they provide you the library. Typically in a library, you will have tables for rise, fall, delay, setup time, hold time for all this. And then we'll see how these are written inside the Liberty file. Now for a delay, right? For a cell delay, cell delay is a function of input transition time so how fast input is rising if input is rising faster your delay may be less because the output will transition faster typically it's also a function of what is the output load output load is a capacitance so for example let's say you have a cell here now the delay through this cell is a function of how fast input is rising also known as slew and what is the load now the load can be of two type one is basically the load of the wire which is this and the load of the cell next cell it is driving this and this load value is also for the next cell the load value is also coming from the liberty file now let us say in our case the input transition time is 0 0.5 nanosecond here and the load is 0 0.045 plus 0 0.005 picofarad so 0 0.045 plus 0 0.0005 so basically 0 0.0.5 so our load is also 0 0.5 and our transition time is also 0 0.5. So Liberty file will have this kind of table, which will be generated during library characterization uh, during running spy simulation. So it will have this kind of table. And it's nicely shown in a tabular format here. When you open the Liberty file, it may not look as nice. So we'll first understand more it visually and then see how the table actually is written like because in a text file, it will be written uh, differently, not as visually appealing way as here. But here we have load as 0 0.5 and we have input transition as 0 0.5. So what the STA tool will do is, so this is output load, this is input transition. And for these input transitions and output load, what are the delay values that has been filled in? So like for example if load is 0 0.005 and transition is 0 then the delay value is 0 0.1 but if let's say load is 0 0.05 and basically it input transition is 0, 0.0 so then the delay will be 0 0.15 in our case the transition is 0 0.5 and load is 0 0.05 so our delay value will be 0 0.23 so STA tool will actually calculate the delay value using this. Now here in this case, the values are exact. What if let's say delay value was 0 0.45 and output load was 0 0.0045, not 0. Point, uh, not exactly here, somewhere, somewhere in this slightly different region. Then what will STA tool do? Then in that case, Okay, so let's say somewhere in this region, somewhere in between, then the STA tool will have to extrapolate polate the values to calculate. Now, this extrapolation can actually be very complex. Okay, so basically you will have a table like this, 
STA tool will map it. And we're not going into detail of how this calculation will be done. Also keep in mind, these are non-linear models. So there is some extra calculation. It's not just a linear interpolation, but without going into details of the calculation, you have to keep in mind, basically within this, the STA tool will interpolate and calculate the values, okay? So that's 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 how STA tool will calculate the values of the delays. So in the timing model for each output, there'll be table and there'll be table values. And basically, if the table exactly it matches, then it will put the exact value. But for other cases, it will actually extrapolate and calculate the value. Now, this we explained it using a vis visual table. So our table was a visual table where basically we had written down in this nicely looking format. But typically in the library file, how the table will look like. It will look like this. For a pin, this is how a Liberty file will look like. For a pin, you will have direction of the pin, what is the capacitance on the pin, what is the function of the pin, and then you will have rise delay. Okay, so this cell underscore rise means Basically, when this output is rising, what is the delay? And now you can see delay is written something like this. So this is actually a table. Index one means, so there are two indexes of this table, like we had seen earlier, uh, your slew, transition time, and capacitance. So index one, index two. Now your question is, how do I know whether index one is capacitance or index two is capacitance or whether index one is transition time or index two is transition time. To understand that, you will have to search for this template. There will be this template in the Liberty file, which will tell you what is the meaning of index underscore one and what is the meaning of, of index underscore two. So basically you have index underscore one and index underscore two, and you then you have the values, which is like our table, which we were seeing values will be filled in. So for example, when it's 0 0.04, so let me draw it a little bit nicely. When it is 0 0.04 and 0 0.006, the value is 0 0.7. So similarly, all this table, which was a nice looking table as we had seen earlier, will be converted, can be converted to this kind of table in a textual format. So here index one represents input net transition and index two represents total output capacitance. Okay. Table sizes can be different. Here our table size is seven cross seven. It can be three cross three. That depends on how much characterization you have done. And seven cross seven basically just represents the index, uh, represents the size of the table you have calculated. Index underscore one indicates the row. Index unders two indicates the uh, column. So what would be the cell rise time if input transition is 0 0.1 and capacitance is 0 0.003? So capacitance is 0 0.03, so second one, OK? And input transition is 0 0.1, third one. So tip, you can basically calculate what will be the delay here in 0 0.11. And again, this is exact value. If the values are here and there, as we saw, your STA tool will extrapolate. Now, let me show you, as in this again looks very nice on the slide. So, but let us look at a real textual Liberty file and see how, how, how it looks like. So let us open a Liberty file. Okay. So we we'll look at this Liberty file. Okay. So in this, you can see a Liberty file. In this Liberty file, you will see, OK, this is actually CK to D. So this is not a delay table. This is actually a setup check table. Just a Oops. OK, so it's actually a setup tab table for a setup uh, when the clock is rising. And you will see here, there is index underscore one and index underscore two. But again, the question is valid. What is the meaning of 
index underscore one. And what is the meaning of index underscore two? So we'll search that. We'll, as I said, right, this will be identified by searching for this setup slew. So there is a template here. Let's search for that template. And that will tell us what each thing here means. So let us search here. So here you can see there is a template defined. OK, there is variable 1, which is transition, and variable 2, related pin transition. OK, so basically, what is a related pin? Clock pin with respect to which setup is calculated. And what is the other pin? Constraint pin, D pin of the clock. So basically, you now know on both pins there is a transition, and based upon that, your setup time is setup time is calculated. Now, so basically, you have input pin, uh, D pin transition, and clock pin transition, and based upon these values, will take place. Now, this will be part of the Liberty file. Now, when you're running an STA tool, you want to find out actually which portion of this table is being used in my analysis and that you can very easily find by using a command like uh, report underscore calculation that's a that's a command uh, in prime time if you're using open source tool the command is report underscore decalc which is basically report underscore delay calculation you tell okay from ck to deep in that setup arc, what how is the value being calculated? And what tool will do is it will print out a subsection of this full table. It will not according to this particular design specific situation. So in this design specific situation, whatever are the values, okay. So it'll tell first tell you what are the what is a PVT corner, okay, and what are the values of this particular design, right? So do you see the whole table had multiple values. If I come back here, the whole table had 5, 30, 50, 80, 140, 200, 350. Similarly, the other index has 5, 30, 50, 80, 140. Corresponding to this particular calculation which you're asking, it will print out a subset of the table. OK? And based upon that, it will tell you what is the value I have calculated. So it has calculated a setup value of 30.22. Based upon that, basically extrapolating between these two. In 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 your in your case, basically in this particular case, constraint pin transition is 11.77. Related pin transition is 00, which is slightly off from this table. Here in this table. Basically, 5 and 30 value are given. So what it will do is ext extrapolate this. And based upon that extrapolation, it has calculated the setup time values 30.22. So let's, let's understand this again. There will be a delay table, which will be a common delay table for a cell, which will have okay index 1, index 2. And you can look at the template to see what is the meaning of index 1. What is the meaning of index 2? Then STA tool will identify, OK, what is the value of index underscore 1 for this particular design or for this particular path or flop you're checking? What is the value of index 2? It will go to that subset and then calculate the value for that particular design. Now let us come back to the slides and understand from the slides again to recap the concept, OK? So we now understand how these tables are written in the Liberty file. So we'll, learn, we'll go back to this. Basically, how the delay value is being calculated is, it will look at what is the transition time, what is the load. It will go look at the table, find out closest values for those transition and load. If those exact values exist, which is the case here, it will tell, OK, this is the delay value and use that. If not, it will extrapolate as per the equations, which are not non-linear equations, but it will extrapolate and calculate the exact delay. Hope you liked the video uh, and hope you understood the calculations. If you still have any questions, of course, you can add a comment in the YouTube video and then we'll, we'll be very happy to answer. Thanks a lot.